This is No BS Job Search Advice Radio, episode 2896. I'm Jeff Altman, the Big Game Hunter, and welcome to Saturday. And I'm on vacation. I'll be back the following Monday. I'm going to be checking in remote working with some of my coaching clients when I'm not on the road. But the long and the short of it is, you know, I'm here to help. And that's why I'm pre-recording some of these shows in order to provide you with coverage while I'm away. And this show today on Saturday is one about final interview blunders that people make. I don't want you making them. Please be careful to avoid them. Hope you find this helpful. Please give this show a great review wherever you listen to it or watch it. I'll be back in just one moment. I want to talk with you about the big final interview blunder. I keep seeing happen time and again, and it's awful. Now, let me explain how it, it's set up. You get the contact. It's a call. It's an email. It's some message that lets you know you're going back for the final. And you feel you've got this locked up. You're going back for the final. But you forget one thing and don't do the second. The thing you forget is that you're still competing. And as such, you're competing against other people or the idea that there's someone else out there who can do this better than you. And as a result, I don't want to say you coast into it, but you're not as well prepared as you could be. You need to always remember that you're competing for roles. And as, when you get that contact about the, scheduling the final interview, ask them, how many other people are they inviting back? This way you know. And even if they tell you no one, it's just you, I've seen so many situations where people still get turned down and they go back to square one to interview. So that's a reminder number one. Now, here's the big one. The big one is that you spend no time reviewing your previous interviews. And it's not just simply for what your answers were, because you know that's easy. But the hard thing to admit is that there were rough edges that occurred previously. And they're still on that, and you're thinking they're past it. They are not past it. They are in a position where they're still evaluating and assessing and trying to figure out if they can get through those issues and you're okay enough to hire. And that's a weird concept, I know, but trust me, I've been in so many situations where issues surfaced on the first or second interview and here they are with the senior exec and the person gets turned down for them. So I want to remind you that you need to proactively address these in your conversation with them and be prepared to answer questions that might surface. And you can acknowledge it by saying, you know, in an earlier round, someone asked me a question that kind of seemed like they wanted me to talk this way, but I went down a different path. Let me tell you exactly what I've done. And that becomes one way and one type of scenario. Another one is you don't have much experience with it, where you can say to them, look, I don't have a lot of practical experience with that particular skill or that type of situation. But since being here, what I've done is, and then go into some of the homework that you've done, the more fully understand what that scenario, what that technology, what that experience might be like. And you can say, I'm not going to be expert walking in, but with practice I can be because I've taken the time to understand what's needed given your environment and I've gone to the drawing board to learn. Remember, this is going to surface. And if it doesn't surface because they asked you a question, I want you to bring it up so that this way it's not untested. It's not unaddressed. So that's today's show. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, visit jobsearch.community. There's a lot more there that'll help you. In the meantime, I'll be back with more tomorrow. Have a terrific day and be great.